All right, so I guess some people are going to switch between the chat and the questions. All right, we should get started, though. Yeah, let's get started. All right, guys, so today I have Lior on the call. And um, Lior actually has had an SEO and consulting business. He doesn't traditionally um, just stick to SEO. He actually is great with um, pretty much any type of uh, marketing for clients. And Lior focuses a lot. Um, when I go to Lior, we usually talk about sales and SEO, um, which is something that I know a lot of you have struggled with and I struggled with in the past um, is really just closing the client. Something that a lot of us are pretty good at is the technical aspect of SEO, but not really uh, going out and getting the clients all the time. And you know, here at LinkBound, we've talked a lot about um, outsourcing your business and automating things and you as the business owner being the person who just goes out, gets clients. So that's why I really wanted to have Lior on the call today to really give you guys a system um, and as it says, a three-step flawless uh, sales pitch. So to go out there um, and not only, Lior does focus on you know cold calling, things like that traditionally, but really the system and a lot of the stuff we're gonna be talking about, um, Lior will get into more. So Lior, if you could just kind of introduce yourself. I know uh, you've been traveling a lot lately and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. For sure, just before we start, um... Are we recording here? I just want to make sure that. Yes, yeah, we're recording. This will we will be giving out the replay. Uh, <laughs> it automatically goes to my YouTube, which is nice of Google Hangouts. Sweet. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, as Mario said, you know, I've really been focusing on SEO, client acquisition for the past two years or so, and some of you may recognize me from around the web. I've been, you know, writing for for SourceWave and, and Drip Apps and Money Mindset for a while now. And the way everything really started was with Amazon. So I was selling ebooks on Amazon for quite a while until I realized that what I was doing is really just working with the Amazon algorithm. And from there I moved to working with Google's algorithm. And what I did was, and this is something that I'll mention closer to the end, was I found certain websites and certain methods of just generating these leads and generating these consults on autopilot and that's not what we're going to cover today we're actually going to give you the option to uh, join us in another webinar at the end of the call so stay tuned for that of how to get those leads and get those those prospects uh, you know on the phone but what we're focusing on today is how to sell so what i've really been doing is a combination of hiring coaches, mentors, reading sales books, and of course trying it on my own. And what it comes down to is really just three steps that I've broken down to of how to sell people pretty much any service that has a benefit to them. And you'll see how this is very different from traditional sales. And um, yeah, if there's nothing else that Mario was gonna add to, we just get started really with the agenda of the call. Yeah, definitely, let's get started. All right, cool. So today I want to focus on why you should focus on sales over actually doing the work in your own company or on doing other forms of work that are not making you money in the business. Then we're going to go over what exactly to say in a consult. So what I've done is I've prepared an actual sales template that you can download at the end of this call. So stick around for that. And then we're going to get into how to package and price your services. Won't spend too much time here, but it will give you an idea of what to do before you get into a call that will actually allow you to make the sale a lot easier. Then we'll go over a couple of tips for having a successful meeting that don't really have to do with the script. And I'll even tell you a funny story of how I won a deal while I was in my pajamas on webcam. So well, let's just hop right into it. And of course, if you have any questions, just use the question box. I'll check it um, every once in a while. And there'll be time for questions at the end. So first, why sales? So I believe that every person should learn sales. And I really believe that people don't make money because they can't sell. So that means learning to sell your own products, learning to sell services. You can sell anything. You can grow any business from scratch. You can you know, hone your sales skills. And pretty much they say that salesmen never go hungry. You know, because if you can sell something, you'll always be guaranteed a job. So it's really what brings the money in and the rest can be delegated. So if you sit down and think about your business, sales was most likely the thing 
that actually brought you a client or brought you money or brought you income. But doing the work, you know, clicking here and there, building your PBNs, doing the SEO work or the PPC work, that doesn't really bring you more money. That just makes the client happy, of course. So what I think you should focus on, or everyone should focus on, if they want to grow a business and sort of be the CEO and the manager position of their own business, is sales because that's what's actually bringing in more revenue. Okay, everything else can be delegated to your staff, your employees, or outsource. Okay, so everything most people teach in courses and online is about how to get leads and how to generate interest, but they don't really go over how to actually close a deal with those leads and get money in your pocket. So my goal in any form of marketing is just to get on the phone or get in the same room with the person I'm selling to. Once I'm there, everything is live and I can put everything I know into practice. So let's just go over a bit of packaging and pricing first. So is of course, uh, are you changing your slides? Cause I'm, I'm just seeing the same one. Yeah, it might be a bit of delay. You should see packaging and pricing services at the top. Do you mind uh, just uh, sharing? There we go. There it is. You might maybe have to click on the screen to get it to work or something. All right. Is it full screen now? Yeah, good. Oh, actually, that's why. It's not showing full screen. So if you could just keep it. Uh... All right, I'll try to keep it like this as big as possible. Yeah. There Sorry, we go. Guys. Sorry about that, guys. OK. So there's, of course, pay per lead. And there's also a retainer model. Retainer model just means that someone's paying you a monthly fixed amount. And pay per lead is just another version of <clears throat> sort of being paid based on your performance. So it's sort of guaranteeing the person leads, and you only get paid every time someone sends you a lead. And you know, my first client was actually a hybrid of the two. And I don't want to focus too much on that, but really what you have to decide from the beginning is what your service is going to be. Most of you already have your own companies or already have clients whatever you're comfortable with. I, of course, love retainers because it guarantees you're getting paid. But if you're very confident in your results, you can go with paper lead because in that case, you can actually have a lot higher potential to make more money each month. You just have to be really good at delivering leads, of course. Then there's how to put value on the service. Okay, okay what this means is that many people just go into a console and the value that they say that their service is worth is just, you know, I build links. I will, you know, build these citations for you. I will rank you in the maps thing. And they're really focusing on these features and not really putting a value to it. Because if you just start telling people the features, what's going to happen is they're going to say, okay, well, Lior can do X amount of links for 500 bucks a month, but I can just go on another website and find some other guy to give me those exact same links. But when you package it so it's not really up in the air and you tell them that the value of getting those links is you know that they rank higher, that they're making a return on their investment, then it turns into a different sort of sale where they're focused on the outcome and not just the features. So when we package it and we turn it into you know a high priced, high ticket service, all of a sudden they're not thinking about the features and where they can get it for cheaper. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make it a service that we're focusing on the outcome of what they're going to get when they pay this high amount for the service. All right. So I never detail the services. I don't talk about link building. I don't talk about what exactly they're getting. In fact, I don't even give reports on link building to my clients. I just tell them, you know, where they're ranking this month, how their traffic increase, and real things that are. ROI based, okay? On page, off page, blog posts, that's pretty much as general as I'll ever say. You know, we're gonna do some on page work, then we're gonna do some off page work to make you look more popular in Google's eyes. The value, <clears throat> excuse me, is in the rankings for most of the time, or the value is in how much money you're gonna get back after investing with me. All right, just switch slides, let me know if you see it. So there's different methods of packaging and pricing services. There's people who do setup fees. There's people who offer multi-tiered sort of uh, prices. That means, you know, three different pricing and each one has a different set of features. There's people who guarantee results. There's people that just do one-time payment and I'll rank you. And once the sales roll in, 
you can be confident enough to get people jumping on for full retainers. You don't have to get into all these gimmicks with, with guaranteed this and you know paper performance. And when you start getting into gimmicks, you start to end up having bad clients that are just really anxious. They don't have a lot of trust with you because they had to rely on these, on these types of models that were only guaranteeing their safety. So I find that when you force them to go with a lot of trust in jumping in with you on a full retainer, you'll actually notice that they'll end up being a better client. Okay, so my packages, usually it has a setup fee that covers initial links or initial on-page optimization, initial competitor research, all that sort of stuff that's a one-time sort of deal. Then if I'm selling SEO, it'll be a monthly retainer with three-tiered pricing. And if I'm selling PPC, it'll be a setup fee with a monthly fat, uh, flat fee. Okay, the three tiers that I do for SEO would the only thing that can really differentiate them if I'm only really, um, only really promising ROI is how many keywords they're going to get. So how much ROI they're going to get. So it will depend on the amount of keywords. And there's National Geographic did a study on how this sort of tiered pricing actually works with people's psychology. So they did an example with popcorn at a movie theater, and the smallest popcorn was $3, the large popcorn was $7. And everyone was buying the small popcorn because they didn't want to spend four extra dollars, you know, more than double for a large. But then what they did is they introduced a middle price. So they had $3, $6.50, and $7. And then all of a sudden, everyone was buying the large package. So the psychology was, I want more popcorn, so I might as well go with the middle package but oh, it's only 50 cents more for the large. So everyone will just jump from 650 to seven. And then they actually found that they were selling more of the large. So we're doing the same thing with SEO. You can make your little, your middle package, you know, and the, and the highest package close together. And you want to make the smallest package really small. It doesn't include a lot of stuff and it's just really not appealing. And then we can also reverse it by forcing people into the middle package. So you can make it, you know, $3, and then $6 and the highest package can be like $30. So no one's going to buy the $30 one popcorn, but you know, they might buy the middle one because it's only a couple of dollars more than the initial. All right. Hope that made sense. That's pretty much what I do for, for pricing SEO and PPC. I like to tear it out. And that was the point of that. All right. Just checking some questions. All right. Great. Yeah. I was going to say, let's ask uh, if anybody has any questions, um, I know we're not too familiar with Google Hangouts, but uh, if you could see the Q&A icon on the left side, it should be, you can enter your questions. And uh, something I'd just like to comment is, I know a huge mistake that I made when I was first getting SEO clients. I don't know if you guys are in this position, but I know when I first started, I just wanted as many clients as fast as possible. And I actually had a friend who uh, went through this exact same mistake. and. I would take on a client for, let's say, $600 to $1,000. And that was just really an arbitrary number. I didn't calculate my expenses. I didn't look at um, you know, how I could outsource this. I was thinking that I could take on the world and do five clients, you know, 10 clients all at once, all by myself. Um, and I was just starting out. So you have to take into account software and uh, you know, VPSs and hosting and all the technical fun stuff. Um, but a, a big lesson that I learned and I know my friend just learned, uh, is that you need to kind of not be afraid to charge more. And, um, usually the, the biggest issue that I see when people charge a low amount of money for their services is they don't value their services. Um, so you kind of have to, you know, look around like Lior said, and, um, not only can you compare prices to other agencies, um, which can also be a little bit dangerous before I say, go ahead and compare your pricing with other agencies, um, you don't know how they're outsourcing their projects. So just take that with um, a grain of sand. Don't take that as black and white answer. And um, go through the process of finding out what you need to charge in order for you to be profitable, just like Leor said, um, and really have self-esteem in your services, uh, you know, have confidence in them. For sure. Yeah, and you'll notice that with this sales method, you could actually, the number is so arbitrary. And it's really what you're confident in. I mean, you're going to see how, just by going through this method, how confident you'll feel even just by hearing me say it, that, it, but sometimes by the end of the call, I'm already changing my prices because I'm so confident I'm going to sell this guy. 
So it really matters on how confident you are in delivering results. And of course, you shouldn't be on a call with someone that you don't know that you could for sure get the results either with an outsourcer or with yourself. So let's move into some essentials before we actually get to the consultation. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, are you with the decision maker on the phone? Right? This is the number one mistake that I used to make and I see a lot of people making. You know, They spend an hour on the phone with someone and they realize that it was really the marketing manager and it wasn't the person who's going to be paying you. So even sometimes the marketing manager says, yeah, I'm in charge. Really, they have to go take all the information you gave and present it back to their employer. The problem with that is they're just going to sum it up in a couple words. You know, he charges this much. He says he can promise this. Great. And then they didn't deliver the same amount of value. They didn't lead them through the pain and the process of this whole consultation, which is a huge mistake. So I will just refuse to begin on the phone now with anyone who's not going to be actually paying the bill. And if there's a partner involved, I'll ask them straight up in the beginning. The next question you want to ask is, can they afford it? Right? It doesn't really, anyone can afford anything. You know, everyone has a credit card. Anyone can pay for your service, but is it really going to be beneficial to them? You know, you can, if you do this method, you know, it's kind of dangerous because you can convince even the smallest business to pay you whatever you want, really. And that's not sometimes the best thing for them. So you really want to make sure they can afford it. And when I say afford, I don't mean that they have to decide whether it's worth it to invest or not because it should, SEO should always be worth it. I mean, whether your range of service is even good for them. You know, if they're selling pizza, you know, pay, spending two, three, or four thousand dollars in SEO might not be the smartest move because, you know, each sale is only a couple dollars. So that's what you want to ask yourself before wasting time getting on the phone with them. And if neither of those are there, the deal won't happen. Okay. And the one thing you can ask, you know, is there anyone else you want to get involved? And if they say, oh yeah, you know, I might need to ask my partner or my wife, then make sure that you reschedule a call or get them on the phone right then and there. It's okay to do this with multiple people on the phone. All right, just some more tips for the consultation before you get into it. So when I use the word consultation, I can mean strategy session, sales call, whatever you want to call it. Usually I call it a strategy session or a consultation. And people know that I'm going to be selling them something near the end or I'll make it known that there'll be an opportunity to work together at the end. And what I do is I do a session and a pitch in one call. So the session is, the way it used to be is, I would lead them through an hour, give them a ton of value, great, tell them what they need to do. And at the end, I would say, why don't I send you a PowerPoint and we'll just you know, take it from there, I'll follow up with you, and I'll give you a quote. And they'll be like, yeah, sure, that's great, sounds great, and then I would have to spend an hour making this whole beautiful presentation, send it over to them, and then follow up you know, for a month until I begged for the sale. Now. I don't do that anymore. In fact, I don't even send any emails or any follow-up calls at all. I'm getting a yes on the phone right then and there. And when I do that, it saves me time, it saves me money, I don't have to follow up, and I know for sure that I'm only working with people that are dying to work with me. And that's what I love about this method because it forces the yes or even the no on the call. I'll take a no over a maybe any day. The next most important thing is that you're using silence in all of your questions. So the moment you ask a question, you're staying completely silent. And you're not adding to your questions. You're not saying, you know, you're not finishing the question and then you know, adding more to it, to your sentence, or adding another reason why they should answer you. I just ask the question simply and I stay completely silent. And you know, sometimes the silence can be two, three, or even five minutes long. And I will just completely sit there, I'll even mute my microphone because it's so hard to stay silent, but you're letting the person sit with, you know, with the question. Sometimes they just will ask, you know, are you there? And they'll say, yep. And it'll just keep being quiet until they answer you. And sometimes they'll answer you and the answer is not good enough. And I'll still be quiet. And then what will happen is I realize, oh, you know, maybe my answer wasn't good enough for him. And they'll keep offering more. We want them to talk. We don't want to be the talkers. Okay. The next is to always present yourself well. So that means proper audio. You know, I use a Apple microphone. I'm using it right now. So if you think the audio is good, you know, it's pretty simple, cheap solution. I don't have a fancy microphone or anything like that. And also dressing well. You know, to dress well, even 
even if you're using the phone, it gives you a sense of confidence that they can sense. And this is where the pajama story comes in. You know, one time, one of the first clients ever closed, we had a Skype meeting planned. It was early in the morning. And for some reason, I slept in or I just rolled out of bed. I was still wearing pajamas and I went to the computer and realized I had to get on the phone with this guy. And I didn't really think I was going to close him. I just wasn't confident in it. And what happened was this person was some sort of uh, hypnotist, psychiatrist, hypnotherapist. So he really wanted to see me. So he like turned his webcam on and said, oh, I thought we were doing webcam. And so I'm like, oh, you know, give me a second. I quickly put on a shirt, even though I was still wearing, you know, pajama pants. And that's just an example of when you want to be dressed well and, you know, to show confidence. Because I had to, I did close him in the end. He was one of my best clients. Um, but you just want to be prepared for that sort of thing. Um, that's just a little tip. The next is to always push to get on a console. So a lot of people will try to take this sales method or will well, this moment the person, the prospect asks for a price, they'll just start emailing them or using Skype chat or Facebook chat and just trying to get the sale that way. I have done many sales over email, but the problem is that those clients don't tend to stick around the most. You know, it's the people that are really desperate. They want results right away. They didn't do the math in their business and they're just willing to spend, you know, $2,000. I don't care. Just get me results. And those people don't end up staying around for the longest. And when you do email, you don't have the opportunity to put pressure on them on the phone on that spot. So that's what's happening with me and my consults. I don't do emails, I only get them on the phone. If they ask for a price, I'll say I have to get you on the phone, I'm sorry. Most people, when you get them on the phone, are gonna assume that they should block out about an hour for their calendar. Now, what it used to be is, you know, towards the end of the hour, they'll say, you know, I got to go. Yeah, just send me a quote. Or they'll start looking at their watch and they'll, they'll make up some sort of excuse. But now what we're doing is we're actually getting to the sale quite early on. We're getting, in, getting to it within 20 to 30 minutes. Therefore, they'll look at their watch and say, you know, wow, I can't waste time with this guy. Um, I must ask questions. So they're going to start coming up with objections and questions. And then you pretty much have... 45 minutes just answer all their objections until they realize you know they have no other objections and they have to buy so that's the sort of new method that, that i've been doing and the last is to record all of your calls because it comes in super handy you know you can get this for uh, for mac or pc if you have skype pretty much just download a recorder and it will automatically save the call that you do you can listen to it later see where you went wrong if you don't close the sale you can see at one point the person was saying no you can Go back to this webinar and see, was I following the, the script properly? Did I do everything right? And it really just helps you to, to, to practice and to get better. Okay, so here are the three steps that we promised you for perfect consults. The first is to investigate their wants and needs. So this includes where they are in their business, how they're currently doing, what their goals are, what their problems are, that sort of thing. The next step is once we have that information, we're going to challenge our commitment. We're going to say, well, you want to fix all these issues now. You want to get to where you say you want to get, but how committed are you to starting? When do you want to start? You know, and we're, we're sort of flipping it on them. We're putting them into the position where they realize that they need to say yes in order to show that they're, they're serious about their business. And then in the third step, we're releasing control. So we're saying, okay, you can now ask questions. You are the one now in charge and trying to give me objections. Try to, to tell me why you shouldn't buy this product. You know, admit why you need this and that. And we're giving them the, sort of the reins in order to control the sale. And I did write a whole script out for you guys. So let's move into um, Microsoft Word here so I can show it to you. Let me just... Pull up my screen share. All right. Let me know if you can see uh, Word over here. Yeah, we're good. I can see it. All right, awesome. Okay, so the first step, like we said, is to investigate their business. So what I'll do is I'll start with some intro and rapport building. I'll talk about you know the weather, sports, whatever it is in your culture. I know some cultures 
need to, you know, have like an hour long dinner before even speaking about business or some, I know in America, they just want to get straight to the point and within a couple minutes, you're already speaking business. So what I like to do is set the agenda of the call. And this is crucial in order to show that you're in charge. So what I'll say is, you know, okay, John, this is how this call is going to work. First, we're going to talk about where you're currently at in your business. Then we'll talk about your goals and what you want to achieve with marketing. And at the end of the call, you'll have the chance to decide whether we should move forward and work together on this. Okay. And then you just say, does that sound good? And they'll be like, yep, that sounds great. So what I did right there is I showed them that they should relax. I'm going to be asking questions. They don't have to worry about telling me all their details. And at the end, they're going to have the option to actually pay right then and there. So they're already starting to think about, I'm going to have to decide on this call. Okay. So that's how we start. And then I'll say right away, I'll say, well, tell me, John, why are you here? You know, why did you take the time of day to get on this call? And what that's doing is trying to get the answer from them right away. Maybe they can tell us their deepest, you know, problems, or deepest wants right away. Usually they won't. They'll just give you a general answer. Like, yeah, we're looking for someone for marketing and it's okay because we can use that, that answer and work on it. So working on it involves investigating their business and letting them pain themselves. So they're going to, it's like a doctor that asks you when you go visit him, you know, have you been drinking? Have you been smoking cigarettes? Have you been doing this? And you start to feel ashamed and really bad about yourself. So that's what we're doing with this person. We're challenging them and letting them feel the pain that they don't know much about their business. So we'll say, you know, tell me more about your business and what products you sell. How many leads are you getting from your website? What, what time or what type rather typo, what type of marketing have you tried already? How much is that costing you? How much is a client typically worth? What's your current biggest challenge in business? What are the impacts of that challenge? And the most important one is how much money are you making per month with this business? If you don't get the dollar amount, you don't move forward. And this is one of the examples of me staying completely silent. So the person will be like, yeah, we're doing pretty well. Um, we're making, you know, we're making a couple thousand or in the five figures. And I'll just stay completely silent. And then they'll say, we're making about, you know, 15,000 a month. And then, you know, that's when they actually admit it. And if they don't admit, I'll just say, is there a dollar amount to that? And what we're going to do is we're going to use this amount very, very, um, you know, frequently in the rest of the, the script. So it's really important that you get that number and that they trust you before moving forward. A lot of you might be thinking, you know, who in the world would, would trust me with, with their sales numbers? And once again, you have to think about that doctor example. If the doctor doesn't know your symptoms or doesn't know what's going on, they can't properly diagnose you. So you can simply tell them, listen, John, nothing is going to leave this room. And it, it's really necessary that I know where you're currently at in, or, in order to know if we can get you to where you want to be. So, you know, I can promise nothing's going to leave this room, but I need to know how your business is doing in terms of numbers. Okay. And right then and there, you shifted from, to John, the prospect, you were originally just an SEO guy and all of a sudden you're a guy who's actually going to solve his problems using numbers, using math. And it's really powerful for them, uh, for him to hear that. And once he gives you that trust, it's like he's invested already in you. Okay. So now we're going to figure out what it is that they want. So I'll say, you know, where do you want to grow this business in the next 12 months, John? You know, if we had this conversation a year from now, what should have happened in order for you to be happy? And if he says, you know, I want to grow from 15 to 30,000 per month, I'll say, well, what's your motivation for getting there? You know, how would things be different for your business if you go up to 30,000 or we're getting there, have an impact in other areas of your life. And he'll say, yeah, I'll be, I'll be able to travel more with my wife. I'll be able to, you know, to hire a new CEO and then I'll keep going deeper and deeper. I'll say, well, why do you want to hire an ECO? And they'll say, well, it's going to give me more free time in, uh, you know, in the business. And they'll say, what's that going to do for you? And he's going to say, well, that's going to allow me to, you know, travel more with my wife. And then you're going to realize that 
the deeper and deeper you go is the truer reason why he's doing this, why he's hiring you. It's usually to make more money or more time to do things that he really loves. Okay. Just yesterday I had a consult and he ended up admitting after asking a couple layers deep that, you know, he has a passion for music and he wants to go back full time to producing music. And he also used to travel the world, but now he's working so hard in his business that he can't do that. So he wants to free up time by making more money. So I was able to get that by going a couple layers deep. And of course, if they're aiming low, you can just simply ask, you know, why are you aiming so low? 30,000 is pretty low over 12 months. I think you can do a lot higher. And then you can show them case studies of, of uh, how you've done that for other people. The next section is to let them admit that they need this. Okay, this is starting to get into step two, which is, um, as we mentioned, challenging their commitment. Okay, so we'll say, you know, John, if you're currently making 15000 and you want to be at 30000 what's stopping you from achieving this on your own? And he'll say one of three things, but we only move forward once he says or she says all three things. And that first is, you know, inability to get there on their own. You know, I can't do it on my own. I need help. Or I need to get there faster. You know, I want a way to get there faster. Um, instead of taking 12 months, I want it to do it in six months. And I want to use a proven system from someone that's actually done it before. If I don't get all three of those, I won't move forward. So I'll keep waiting for him to just talk and talk and talk until I hear all three. Okay. And, you know, if they say, well, I can do it on my own then I'll actually try to end the call. And then I'll say, you know, John, if you could do it on your own, I'm not sure why I'm here. And then he'll start making up, uh, you know, one of these excuses for one of these, you know, I can't do it on my own or I don't, um, I can do it on my own, but um, I am bu too busy working on other parts of the business. So I, you know, I really can't do it on my own or I want to get there faster. And then if you hear all three, then you can move forward. Okay. So challenging their commitment is asking them, so, John, if you're making 15000 why not just stay there? Okay. In other words, why are you committed to moving forward and making more money? And he'll give you more reasons about why he wants to, to get to that goal, right, like we mentioned up here. You know, what impact would it have on other areas of your life? Okay. And I'll say, is not having this affecting any other areas? And they'll say, yeah, you know, I'm just working so hard that it's, bothering my wife that I'm spending so much time at the office, etc. Then I'll say, okay, and when do you want to fix this? Okay, this is crucial, this question. And he'll say ASAP. You know, I want to do it right now. If he says, you know, we're looking to hire someone within two or three months, you can say, listen, uh, I don't think this is a good fit because we're looking for someone who wants to grow their business right now. And based on all the problems that you just mentioned to me, it doesn't look like it can wait a couple of months. And sometimes they'll have a legitimate reason, you know, like we have to wait for finances or we are currently, you know, updating the product and whatever the reason is, um, it could be real, but, you know, you should actually try to end the call and reconvene when he's ready to get started. Okay, a lot of people online are just looking for a quote and they can start whenever they want. We want them to start right now. The next magical question is, okay, you want to fix this now, but how committed are you to making this happen? Okay, and this question really is challenging the commitment to the fullest. We're asking them, I understand that you want these results, but what are you willing to do? Or how committed are you to them? And he'll say, you know, I'm very committed. We should have done this days ago or years ago. And I'm 10 out of 10 committed. And when you hear those two, they literally just admitted that they're ready to go right now and they're completely committed to getting these results. And that's what we call selling themselves. Just by asking questions, we got them in the perfect position that when we present the solution, they can't say, oh, I don't want to start now or I'm not really, I don't really need this anymore because we just got them to admit that they do. Okay. That's the power of the step two. All right. So now if you remember step three, it was releasing control. So now we're going to let them start talking. So I'm going to tell them why I'm the perfect fit for them to get to their goal. They'll say, okay, John, I can definitely help you with that. I think you're a good fit 
for what you do. Would you like me to tell you more about it? They're like, yeah, sure. And then I'll state what I'm an expert at. Okay, so when you see these lines, you can fill this in with whatever you are an expert at. So I'll say, well, my area of expertise is helping you know e-commerce businesses to get more orders with SEO. All right, and yours can be whoever you're talking to. You know, helping bl plumbers get more phone calls with PPC. All right, and then when they hear that, they say, "Wow, you know, this guy's like an expert at exactly what I do." And then you're saying, "I typically work with businesses just like yours at you know the fifteen thousand per month range, and I help them put a predictable system in place to get them to that you know thirty thousand dollar per month mark." And then he's thinking, oh my gosh, not only is he an expert in plumbers, but he's done this before to other plumbers. This is perfect. Okay, so now we're releasing control. We're just staying completely silent and we're letting them ask questions. He's gonna start to ask you about what it includes. You know, well, what are you doing on my site? How do, how do you, what does the system look like? And what you're doing is you're stating what you do and how it works. So you, what you wanna do is keep it vague. So you can say, you know, I help small and medium businesses gain more customers through um, or by making them appear more often in Google searches. And I really mastered it for the e-commerce niche. I've proven system to get more clients in the e-commerce niche and I've done it for a lot of people. Okay, so notice how I didn't tell them that I'm building links, that I'm writing articles, I'm doing any of that stuff. I'm keeping it at a high level overview. And the reason for that is if they don't understand the high level overview, they're gonna keep focusing on features and they're gonna start comparing the prices to other feature-based companies that pitch them. So if I said, you know, yeah, I'm gonna build links to get you there and I'm gonna write you articles and I'm gonna um, you know, do on-page optimization, then he's gonna think, well, I know a whole bunch of other companies that can do that and it's gonna be way cheaper. So the idea is we're trying to get them to understand that they need to focus on the higher level, which is getting them results. So that's why this is, you know, I help small businesses, I master it for your niche, proven system to get more clients, and you can just fill in these lines with whatever you want, okay? But notice how we didn't say the price yet. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna ask about the price soon after. That whole thing should not have taken more than two to three minutes. To tell them how you're an expert at, and then when they ask what it includes, you tell them from a high level overview, okay? So they might start asking questions, and what you're gonna do is you're not gonna wanna avoid, so if they say, you know, how exactly do you do that? You're not gonna avoid and say, well, we help you gain more popularity. You just wanna keep keeping at a high level overview, but don't avoid the question, or don't divert. So you can still answer, you know, well, we make you look more popular in Google's eyes by, by placing you around the web in a proven way that you know other people don't do, you know. So that was still high level, but it was in, in enough for him to understand that we're doing some sort of work on other websites, like a PBN. Okay, and then when he fully understands, the next question is going to be, well, how much does it cost? And then if you think about it from now, we not only got him to get his commitment and tell us his goals, but we got him to actually ask us how much it costs, which means he's interested in hearing. He heard everything he needs to hear. He got, he told us that he needs it. He told us he's ready to start right now, and now he just wants to know the price. So he perfectly pretty much prepared himself through our questions to hear what the price is, okay? Now, closing the deal is the last step in all of this. All right, once he asks for the price, you wanna answer this and nothing more. So you're gonna say, well, my fee for managing this for you is, and then you're gonna list your price based on the packages that we just went over. And there's also a setup fee of $1,000. But I find that those who make decisions quickly always to turn out to be the best clients and we do amazing work together. So for that reason, I have something called incentive-based pricing, where if you make a decision on the call with me right now, today, the setup fee will be waived and it's not, not $1,000 extra, it's just fifteen hundred per month moving forward, okay. And then once again, you're using silence. Do not say a word after. If they just say okay and mumble, and you know, say uh huh, it's interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Then you're just staying completely silent until you hear an actual question or an answer. 
And what you're actually looking for is for them to say, okay, let's do this or write uh, how do we get started. But if they say, maybe I got to think about it, I have to ask my wife, you don't accept anything in that area. You're going to challenge every single one of those. All right. So what they're going to do is start to have objections if they want to stall or they can't commit just yet. And remember, a no is better than a maybe. You can keep handling each objection by just acknowledging it like, yeah, I understand. You need to ask your wife, but then you handle it precisely. You don't want to over talk or add on to your, your succinct response. Just stay silent and listen. So this is something I mentioned several times now. If you say, I understand you have to ask your wife, but this, but that, but that, and then you know you're quiet and he still doesn't answer. Then you say, but this, and then that, and then that. You're showing that you're a bit desperate. You're showing that you're not confident in what you just said and you have to sell him even more. You want to be completely silent and just wait. Eventually you'll hear, you know, like, all right, let's do this. Or he'll ask you a question, you know, well, what does that cover? What does that include? Or, you know, I don't have money for this or I can't afford it or it's too expensive or I wasn't expecting that. What I've done was I've actually included a whole section here in objection handling um, that, you know, is included in this template, which I don't want to go over right now. It's just too much, but you can definitely look it over and it's going to be available for download right at the end of this. But what I want to do right now is take a couple of questions before uh, moving forward. So let me just check this here. Okay. So. Jelena says, what if they don't want to share their insight? Not sure what you mean by that. Um, going to have to explain. Actor says, can we have the doc file? Of course, it's going to be in a PDF. I'm going to give you a link to it in just a moment. Hang on there. I think what Jelena meant was um, when you're asking them for their income and basically you know, to tell you about their business and stuff like that, uh, what if they don't want to share that with you? Yeah, so I gave the answer to that already. It's pretty much giving the you know the doctor metaphor and explaining that without that number, you can't properly diagnose what the problem is and, and do the math in order to see if they can actually get to their goals. So you need a figure amount, and you can promise them nothing will leave the room. One guy said, okay, I'll tell you. Um, you know, you just want to be silent. Use silence. Let them just hear that their answer is not good enough, and eventually they'll tell you. And it takes a lot of, you know, practice and confidence to get to there. It's going to be very tempting just to move forward, but I'm telling you, you need that number. And, you know, one guy once asked me, you know, I'll tell it to you, but you have to promise to sign an NDA after. But by the time we built that much trust, he, should, he didn't even send me the NDA. And uh, Akshay asked, what if the non-decision maker is the co-founder? So this was a question that came up when you were talking about uh, initially making the call and having your first consultation with them if yeah if it's not a decision maker like I mentioned the first thing you want to figure out is if they're the owner or the one who's writing the check so I'll just say um, in either an email before or I'll look them up or I'll just ask at the beginning of the call say um, you know before we start I just want to make sure that you're the decision maker on this and that you're the one who's actually going to be deciding whether or not this is a good fit and he'll say yeah I'm the decision maker and I'll say, is there anyone else you want to get involved on the call? And he might say, yeah, I want my partner to make a decision with me. And then I won't move forward unless he gets the partner on the phone or he promises another meeting with a partner or something like that. Usually the company is not that big that they need so many uh, people. Uh, just looking through the questions here. Sam so says, one of my favorite questions, can you afford it? Yeah, so we're not actually asking them if they can afford it. We're just um, understanding from a high-level overview based on their, you know, if you go to the website, you see they have a fleet of 10 trucks and you know that they have cash, you know? So it depends. It's just making sure that you're not selling to a pizza business, basically. Definitely. And I think uh, someone said um, one of the hardest parts is uh, portraying value, um, I think, as a business and as a, a personal uh, if you know you're just doing it yourself and um, what I would have to s comment on that is I know when I first started out I bought my domain mariosmino.com and I was just doing it SEO myself I wasn't doing it as an agency or as a company like I do as Linkbound now 
And um, I just went out and I hired a photographer locally. I think I posted on Craigslist originally. It was like 30 bucks. Um, and now that I think about it, I probably could have gotten somebody to do it for free just for their portfolio. And, uh, you know, posted those really good pictures on all my social media profiles. But I think the biggest one uh, social media profile that landed me the most jobs um, started probably about four years ago when I actually was interning for an analytics company. And I created a LinkedIn. And uh, that was the best because I would just exchange connections with everybody. I'd exchange um, rec recommendations. And when I gave them this, basically my website, which had my LinkedIn on it and everything, uh, the owner of the business was like, wow, this kid has his stuff together and, and that portrayed value. So I think that can be transferred over to clients. I think you need to present yourself as a branded individual and, uh, you know, someone who's professional and not have a clean website, have, you know, clean social media profiles, and even something as an SEO that you want to do for yourself is, um, your personal reputation management. So when you, they search your name on Google, you want to have a lot of good things come up. And I know, uh, what I've had some friends do is get testimonials videotaped on YouTube and then they'll rank those YouTube videos in Google. So you literally, when this person is going to look out, you know, kind of do a background check on you, they're finding all this really cool stuff about you. So that's definitely one way to uh, present value. Sorry to get off topic there, Leo. Yeah. No, actually, that's a good point. One thing I forgot to mention was when they get on the call with me, depending on where they found me, they've almost always seen my entire website, my portfolio. Of ranking results so they they're ready to hear the price and it's pretty much an inbound consult most of the time meaning they found me and I didn't really have to cold call them or anything like that so they're they are impressed by me they've heard about me and they want to hear more um, but one thing I kind of disagree with is the website having a clean website is important but you know I've known people and I even did this myself I pretty much had a plain plain landing page it looked very pretty but it didn't include any details except maybe like my phone number or contact page. And I know people that have grown you know, multi million dollar businesses without even going with a crazy branded route from the beginning. So it's important to look clean, but you don't need to spend so much time and money investing on your website when you have other methods, uh, you know, which I'll speak about more in a bit. Um, Sam made a good point here about asking uh, if they can afford it, which I still don't think you should do. But he said it hits them with an ego trip to help them close a the sale. And one thing I learned from Grant Cardone is if they give objections about price, one simple thing you can do to sort of hit this ego trip is ask, you know, well, when's the last time you spent $1,500? And in their mind, they're like, well, they'll answer, well, you know, I went on vacation uh, last month and, you know, I spent $700 on me and my wife per flight. And then you'll say, well, th did that make you any money? And the idea there is they instantly realize, you know, they spent the same amount of money on something that didn't even make them any more money. And if they spend the same amount with you, that they'll actually make a return on their investment. So the idea is we're trying to anchor the price into something that they can, uh, you know, relate to. Whereas before they were just hearing the number 1500 and they were thinking that's way too expensive for me. So sometimes when you ask, you know, when's the last time you spent 1500 it's just an instant switch and they're like, wow, you know, he's right. All right. I see that people are asking more questions. Brian says, how do you find the potential client and get them on the phone, cold calls and email? Yeah, so let's move on to that now. Uh, people don't know how to ask a question. I know if you switch to old Google Hangouts or... What not on the left hand side is a Q&A blue button. If not, it might be on your, the top right of your screen. Um, okay, so yeah, Brian asks, how do you find a potential client? So let's get to that in a moment. Let me just share back my PowerPoint. Okay. All right, so just a couple of extras before we get to that. Of course, there's tonality and body language. So tonality has to do with your voice, you know, how you're using your voice and your tone. So if the person is excited, he's sounding excited, you want to match that. You know, if they're crossing their arms, like body language, you want to cross your arms. And when you do that, people feel that they build rapport with you much faster. But when it comes time for the sale, you don't want to 
use too much emotions. You want to make it really numbers and focus based so it's a logic more of a logical decision. So just a little tidbit extra for you. Um, another pro tip is if a prospect shows interest by agreeing to a meeting or even to moving forward, and then he disappears. You know, this happens sometimes the guy completely agreed to pay me and everything, and then I send the link and he just disappeared. Or something gets caught up with them and they just never show up. So what I'll send is this magical email. It says, you know, hey, John, because I haven't heard back from you on this, I'm going to have to assume that your priorities have changed. All right, it's very curt. It's very, it's a, a bit rude, to be honest. And they're thinking, well, you know, I don't even know what this guy means if he's trying to be rude. But, you know, sometimes I'll send this and I'll just get an instant response. And it's because the person doesn't want to be challenged that they're all of a sudden not interested in growing their business. And, you know, this is something you can do to establish more of an authority with them. All right, guys, so if you want the template I use for the script and you want the objections and if you want the beginning part, which uh, gave more, more tips and starting the call, we're going to be doing another webinar next week on Tuesday, April 5th, uh, 5th at 2 p.m. Eastern. So if you sign up for the next webinar, it will automatically give you the template on the next screen. So all you have to do is go to scoperush.com slash webby. And the title of the webinar is exactly the answer to what a lot of you guys have been asking. How do we even find the prospects? You know, and it's going to be how I find these prospects and fill up my calendar with consults and pretty much going to be going over two different ways that I've been filling up my calendar recently. And one of the ways I've been using, you know, for three years now, it's never failed me. So if you sign up for that webinar, it's going to be another great uh, value webinar. We're going to go over exactly how I find these prospects and you can download the template there. So once again, it's scoperush.com slash Webby. That should redirect you directly to, to sign up. And uh, now, now I'll just take some more questions. But I hope, you, I hope to see you guys on Tuesday, April 5th at 2 p.m. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be hosted by Mario and myself again as well. Yeah, and we'll definitely be doing it on GoToWebinar because we're not used to this yet. <laughs> Yeah, most people are used to go to webinar. It should be good. Yeah. Um, All right. Z Pe Pepe asked a question. He said, I know if, I, if an SEO called my brick and mortar business and began asking about numbers and revenue, I would definitely not provide anything to them unless I knew that they're a stranger. Yeah, that's why I said that most of the consults are inbound, meaning if you use the methods that I'll be going over next week, the next webinar, they've already seen your results. They're agreeing to come into a consult with you because they have reached out to you, right? They didn't, um, it's not like you cold called them and convinced them to get on a consult right then and there on the phone. Because if you did, they're not gonna agree to even speak to you. So the idea is, even if you cold call, you wanna set up an actual time for a planned meeting, you wanna send them the website, you wanna send them your trust, and build that up before you get on the call with them. They should be coming to you in you know a position of seeing you as someone they need versus the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. If I could just comment yeah. on that, um, Leo is basically talking about the difference between inbound and outbound marketing. And outbound would be examples like cold calling, or I know recently, um, especially on a lot of the forums, people have been discussing the strategy of buying a huge list of small businesses, phone numbers, or even email addresses local to them, and then sending out email blasts and uh, pre-recorded phone, basically broadcast to these numbers. And um, if you talk to any business owner, they usually get pissed off from those. Um, I mean, I, I would imagine that um, they convert at a very low percentage. So uh, what Leo is talking about is using inbound, which, um, you guys do SEO. So SEO is definitely a huge form of inbound because the person is searching for what they're looking for. And uh, they're coming to your website when, when, especially when they're typing in like, you know, dentist in Boston or something like that. So it's not like you're reaching out to them and it's a really cold conversation. Uh, basically everything that Lior does is already warmed up. Right. And that also answers your same question. Uh, um, Z Pepe. 
about establishing value constructively. You know, they've already established value with you um, before even meeting you. So that's something to keep in mind. Brian says, is there going to be a recording of this so I can show my staff? Great info. First webinar I've been on that. Real value all the way through. <laughs> I love it, Brian. Thanks so much. I believe uh, Mario recorded this. Yeah, I did. I'll and uh, I'll be sending it all out. And if you want even more value, come to the next one. Uh, it seems like Akshay is asking for the doc file. That They get that if they uh, sign up for the next Webby, right? Yeah, actually, just go ahead to, to the link on the screen right now. Um, I'm not sure if it says explicitly that you're going to get the document, but on the thank you page, the document's there. We promise. If not, you can message me on Facebook and we'll deliver it to you. Yeah, and make sure that uh, when they save their spot for the webinar, they'll uh, automatically get re redirected to a page where they can download that. So if you guys want that, go ahead and go to the link on the screen. It made it uh, easy to just get delivered to you. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll take a couple more questions and then uh, sign off for the day. Max says, would it be awesome to learn how you outsource and manage your business? Amazing training, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't really a question, but uh, I'm going to speak a bit more about managing the next webinar. Um, I don't really teach outsourcing as much as the rest of us. Yeah, I'll, Brian, I'll definitely uh, be going into outsourcing a bit. Or was this, uh, this is Max who said this. Max, I'll definitely be going into outsourcing. Um, I find the best way to really figure that stuff out is use mind maps and and as funny as it sounds, give titles to pretty much every person in your your business or in that mind map. So, for example, I would have like a I'm just making stuff up now, like the the SEO project manager, and then he he doesn't need you know technical skills; he just has specific skills for communicating with clients, and then. You use that mind map to create a hierarchy of you know pretty much how you're going to outsource everything, and then on a consistent basis, you're just finding cheaper ways to do it, really, um, but without you know um, sacrificing quality. But I'll definitely go into that more. Uh, that just reminded me that I wanted to make some mind maps that I share with you guys. So thank you. Nice. Sam asked. Essentially, we have to trust. We have. We want to have trust built before we start to really hard sell them. Well. If you if you notice in the consultation that we just went through, the trust is being built by them giving, you know, and us giving. The moment that they started giving, you know, their income, they start sharing their needs and all that, and their wants and their goals and their deep, you know, secrets. To be honest, they they have to trust you at that point, and we do that by establishing that position of authority. You know, we're the one asking them questions, and they just have to take the leap. And you know we're not really hard selling them. If you notice, at the end, they're asking for the price. We're just really sort of telling to them and giving them an incentive to sign up right then and there. And the only really hard selling part would come during the objections. And it just depends on how much you want to go. Because like I said, if you handle every objections, you can really convince anyone to buy anything from you. So it depends on how ruthless you are. Someone asked. Leo or Mario, do you guys specialize in specific niches for your SEO services? Your approach, we do SEO for every industry. Um, when it depends on the on the method. So next week, when I share two methods, the first one is they come to me, and in that method, it could be any business, and if you know if it fits the criteria that I mentioned on this call, you know they can afford me and all that, then I'll take them. But when I'm doing sort of outbound marketing and I'm running ads and things like that, it really helps to focus on a niche because then you could say, I'm the expert in this niche and I help only your niche, et cetera. So it helps in your marketing message, but you can have you know 10 different niches and 10 marketing messages going out at the same time to different industries. So you're niching down without the other, other niches knowing that you're doing so. At least that's what I do for me. I would, but, yeah. I'm just going to add one thing. I would just add um, that if you are going to stick with one niche, um, I know something I've done in the past is a lot of roofing clients, and I would build a PBN, maybe like you know 20 to 50 websites with all high uh, metrics, 
and then I would stick with that niche. And what I would do is I would actually rank existing websites. And then as Leo discussed is one of the options that you can do and how you sell your SEO um, is I would generate leads and then sell them those leads. So I, I think with your question, you kind of have to think of where you are starting. So are you going to do a you know retainer type of thing where you're getting a monthly payment and you're just ranking their website? Or are you going to be doing a you know, pay per lead type of thing? Yeah, that's why we focus packaging and pricing uh, before. Exactly. All right. So is there any more questions before we sign off? We're right on the dot on the hour now. Just give it a couple more seconds just in case there's any lag. All right, cool. Well, Lior, thank you for coming on. And guys, um, the next webinar will be on Tuesday, April 5th at 2 p.m. Make sure that you reserve your spot. Uh, you're going to go to the URL here that he has on his slide, scoprush.com slash webby. Lior and I will be at the webinar again, and he's going to be going into a lot more in-detail stuff, but mainly focusing on how to uh, prospect for clients, but really how to have them come to you. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see you soon. Lior, you want to say goodbye? Anything? Yeah, thanks a lot. This is awesome. All right, awesome, guys. We'll, uh, I'll get the recording out within a couple hours, and I'll send it to you, and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.